we have to quit looking at people like myself and others talking about, well, you sound angry. Yes, I'm angry, but shouldn't you be? Your anger can be channeled into love. And if your anger is channeled into love, then you go for change. If it's not channeled into love and you can go home and be comfortable by watching the news, by watching what's going on, on TV today, then the issue isn't up here. The issue is at home. I always been a leader. That's what makes it a great state. We were the first ones to say that a person couldn't be property. We were the first ones to desegregate our schools before Brown versus the Board of Education. Black soldiers were taught here when nobody else accepted them. Women leaders were taught here because they didn't want to accept leaders. We have to change our mindset. That's how we began changing this and we working together. Yeah, and that's how we do it. Thank you. out a bit of hope here for our group and you know in 2016 when the refugee rise appropriation was allocated to this community that was the only refugee supportive legislation passed that year in the United States we have people who are willing to work with us and work for our cause and that's why we're here today and I think one of the things that we can do to help move this conversation forward is be purveyors of good information we are, you know, we are at a place in time in our world where we have more displaced people around the world than we ever have before, uh, fleeing war and uh, violence in their home countries. Um, so currently, or this this is a, about a year old, but 21.3 million individuals are uh, refugees. So they are outside of their home country. You know, 86 percent of the world's refugees are actually hosted by developing nations. So they they fled their home countries. Um, they haven't been able to be uh, protected by their own countries, and so they seek refuge in, in neighboring countries. Um, and 86 percent are in in those developing nations. What what defines a refugee? What makes someone a refugee and grants refugee status is that they've been uh, they've been persecuted or they have a fear of being persecuted if they would remain in their home country. Um, and that's persecution either because of race, religion, uh, nationality, political opinion, or social group. How do refugees get resettled? The UNHCR goes and interviews um, each of the individuals and families who've had to flee, um, and they identify those who are in need, need of resettlement. So refugees themselves cannot apply for resettlement. They are identified through the interview process. Um, as individuals who are in need of resettlement because of their circumstances, particular uh, risks that they may experience. You know, people didn't want to leave. They didn't want to leave their home country. They often wait in refugee camps for 10, 20, sometimes 30 years, hoping to be able to go back home. Um, so that, that's the first and best uh, solution for everyone. Um, if that's not possible, the UN looks to see if people can integrate and pursue citizenship in the country in which they fled. The numbers of people that are able to be resettled um, is a very small number. And so you'll see there in the kind of blue uh, graphic there about halfway down the page, of the total refugee population, the UN has identified 8% of that 21 million are in need of resettlement, um, but annually about less than, less than one half of, or less than 1% of people are actually resettled um, to another country. So the United States is one of 30 countries around the world that provide resettlement programs. So again, the, the U.S. is one of 30 countries around the world that work with the U.N. So the U.N. is making recommendations to governments around the world uh, for populations that need to be resettled. And then um, the U.S. sets a determination each year on the numbers of people that it will admit through the Refugee Resettlement Program. Um, you know, and keep in mind the Refugee Resettlement Program is just one of many different immigration channels, different ways that people immigrate here to this country. Um, and it represents about one-tenth of all uh, immigrants that enter our country come through the U.S. Refugee Resettlement Program. Over three million have been admitted to the United States since the program began in 1975. Um, again, so it says UNHCR screens and interviews each resettlement candidate, and then the United States and each country on its own conducts its own security screening um, of those refugees. So the U United States alone makes the determination whether or not it will admit someone to this country based on its own security screening. Refugees who enter this country are a tenth of all immigrants and they're the most highly screened and vetted population and have been. Yeah, eight eight different it. U.S. Uh, government agencies are involved. Um, it's, a, it's an intensive screening process. You know, we have People on our staff who still have family members overseas that you know they were interviewed and screened and um, you know they, they they still have not been been resettled because they're still going through that. Refugee resettlement has become a politicized issue. Um, it hasn't been historically. It's been something that's been supported 
um, by both sides of the aisle. Here locally in Des Moines, we have both U.S. Committee for Refugees and Immigrants and uh, Catholic Charities um, who provide resettlement services. There have been more refugees admitted to this country under Republican leadership than Democratic leadership. This is the first time this has really become such a uh, intense uh, partisan topic. Point. So historically, the, the ceiling the U.S. has set for refugee admissions has been about 90,000. Um, President Trump um, has reduced that to 45,000 for this year, but there's concern that we're not even on track to meet that number. Um, if we continue at this rate, the United States would resettle just more than 20,000 people this year. This represents the populations that have come here to Iowa just in the last four months. So um, about a quarter from Eritrea, 28% uh, from Bhutan, 28% from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, so you can see there's, there has been some shift in the populations who are coming here to the state. A little bit about uh, you know, refugee status as people are entering the country. Again, refugee status is one of many different types of immigration. Uh, statuses, so that, that is their immigration status when they enter the country. After one year, they're required to adjust their status to legal permanent <coughs> residents or green card holders, and then after five years are eligible to apply for citizenship. Is that refugees uh, can work immediately and indefinitely. Their work authorization never expires. They're here to stay, they're here to build a new life, as you heard our speakers talk about, so they, they get to work right away. And that's kind of how the U.S. resettlement program is designed, that people get into jobs and get working within their first three to six months to support themselves. Three months of support is all that the federal government provides through the resettlement program, and so families are expected to begin working, begin paying their way um, immediately. Refugees pay their way here. They come with a with, uh, travel loan. They sign a loan prior to coming that they will repay the cost for their travel to this country. So it's an interest-free loan, um, but they're expected to begin paying on it six months after arrival and have it repaid, I think, within five years. The immigrant refugee population in Iowa is the largest pool of potential employees for employers in the state. We're one of the only growing demographics in the state. So we are, we are a solution to a problem.